good. Start this sucker up. Hey everyone, um, late and sh a day late, a dollar short, and a host missing, but it's, here's this week's Linux. Um, you want to rehash the few things we left out of last week's or just dive into this week? I don't really care. Uh yeah, it's like it's it's over. A couple of people were pointing out things on uh, LibreOffice, you know, primarily that it's not a bad name if you speak the Spanish language, because Libre means freedom, man. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I completely understand the the naming. And, <laughs> I mean, it's it doesn't matter at the end of the day to me. It's just. It's a stopgap until Oracle decides they're going to give it up. It's a stopgap until Oracle decides to give it up, although I'm not sure it's going to happen. And something mm. else somebody else pointed out to me is most people, when they're using OpenOffice, aren't actually using OpenOffice. They're using that, uh, what is it, that Go um, dash OO, which is like a, a, a redone suite. Uh, oh, doesn't work. I see it in the, in the yeah, document. it's um, and I forgot about that. But basically, what they do is they take the open office base and add okay. some necessary proprietary uh, stuff on top to make you know working with uh, Microsoft file formats and other stuff better. And I forgot a lot of distros prefer to use that over the raw open office because a lot of the raw work is done for them. <laughs> And I forgot about that, and that, and that is, uh, uh, Libre may be the greatest thing since sliced bread. What is really going to matter is rather they continue to base their work on OpenOffice, or they start basing it on Libre, since they're what a lot of distros are going to wind up using, which could be the kink here. I mean, I know, I know Libre already has a, a suite coming up. Uh, it's like, a, it looks great, and it's not, but it's like I forgot about those little tweaks like that that we all go to a central source because the last thing every single distro wants to do is do all those retweaks that really takes a good set of resources to do. <laughs> so. I don't know why I've, I've not heard of that until then. I guess I... Uh, well, I it's like nobody calls it that. It, nobody calls it that. Really only distro developers remember that. I forgot. It's like cause as I started like going around in some distros going hey are we ever going to see this and they just like they very politely bit my head off and go well I'm using whatever these people use because I am not going to kill myself redoing open office for the distro and I'm like good point <laughs> um, unfortunately uh, I'm having less and less favor of KDE I love KDE but this freaking this bug is taking on a life of its own. It, it two updates eight weeks later, and the desktop still doesn't work right on KDE. This is, this is the, no. <laughs> I, I love KDE, but the end result is right now I'm having a hard time recommending it to anyone because I know they're going to be in a boxing match with their desktop. I just I cannot send them there. That's I can't. <laughs> That's, all right. Now that we've battled on about old shit enough, uh, are you? Are, what do you think of this crap T-Mobile's doing? <laughs> Have you read on this or heard on this? I, I, I read it, actually, I saw it a couple of days ago, but then I, I just read it again when I saw it in the article here. Um, the T-Mobile the, the G2, where it, it resets itself to the default firmware? Yeah. That's a little ridiculous. But, uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I guess eventually they'll come up with a way to wipe out that default firmware. It's just a matter of now they realize that it's there, coming up with a way to get around it. Yeah, but, you know, basically this makes the phone unrootable until somebody figures out a way to find what chip it's on and erase it. Right. And we're assuming that when you find that chip and erase it, there isn't another chip on there saying, now brick the phone. <laughs> which you that's wouldn't, which, what, which you wouldn't know about until you test that. <laughs> right. Because you wouldn't and have a clue what chip like that is. Not, it would probably be a hardware you know, you'd have to go in and solder, unsolder, whatever, something. Yeah, it's like we thought Apple was bad. This is, this is ridiculous. It, it has a potential to be really bad. Well, no, it's like, the, the, this is, I was desperately afraid of this, and I'm getting more and more afraid of this with Android, because Android has been left at the mercy of the cell phone carriers, who 
deplore and hate innovation. They are the cable companies of the telecommunications industry. Um, now, is it actually T-Mobile that has uh, created this, or, or is it uh, HTC that's doing it on the behalf of T-Mobile? Or that's a little uh, that's a little murky right now. However, I'm guessing it isn't Plan One for HTC since uh, every the, other the HTC phone. Yeah, since every other HTC phone out there, including the AT&T ones, do not do this. And AT&T's, who was historically being really bad about this, it's like, uh, T-Mobile just one-upped everyone. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> that's, that's for, the, for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, uh, what this is, is a hardware chipset that's part of the G2, pardon me, which... If you root your Android device, the first time you turn it off and turn it back on, it will unroot itself. It will restore to the original stuff, which basically defeats the whole purpose of doing it. Because eventually, at some point, either because your battery went dead or because you have to reboot, you're going to have to reboot the phone. <laughs> it's eventually going to happen. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, it's basically, it's, you know what's sad about this is that this is what's like left of the official Google legacy. You know, there was the G1, Nexus is dead, dead, buried, never coming back, unless you give Google 25 bucks, which I'm almost thinking at this point is worth it. <laughs> it's tempting. It's, it's getting there. It's, I, the problem is there isn't a CDMA version, and there's never going to be an LTE version. So paying to become a Google developer allows you to buy an purchase one. A, an unlocked version. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's nah, I'm okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me pay six hundred dollars for a phone that's now somewhat out of date. I mean, it's it's still. It, yeah. It's, well, it's like honestly, I was waiting on the Nexus too. I'm like, the Nexus one's great, but there's been advances in the technology since then, right and we're moving to LTE and. It's like I was waiting for a Nexus 2 that I was hoping was going to have all that shit, and instead they killed the whole line of crap. But it's, uh, I'm, uh, my honest hope, uh, I, A, I almost wish I had a T-Mobile account just so I could walk into a T-Mobile store and cancel it on this. <laughs> just so go, By the way, if anybody has a T-Mobile phone and you're not like on some contract and you like Android, you should go to the T-Mobile customer service people and cancel your account just on principle of fucking with Android. No, 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 don't do that. But I mean, this is almost that bad. Um, but it, this sets a bad precedent. Uh, I'm hoping somebody sues them over this because if this flies, uh, this sets a really bad precedent that other carriers might follow in suit. And, and right. start reproducing well, it sort of goes the whole idea of being able or being legally allowed to jailbreak your phone now. Although I guess you still can do it. They yeah, just, you still they can do it. You just have to figure out a way around this hardware chip. They're not preventing you from rooting it. They've just added a feature which restores the phone up on boot. <laughs> But yeah, like you're saying, honestly, I'm wondering where the Electronic Frontier Foundation suit is. Of course, I'm, I'm not, I don't have as much faith in the uh, EFF as I used to, given some of the things they've been putting their weight behind lately. It's like they, they've become less a consumer rights group and more a, how can we push our ultimatum at any cost? <laughs> Which is a little disturbing. I don't know if you feel the same way about them as of late. It's... I, I guess I just don't know enough about the uh, the EFF itself. Uh, what, what, uh, what the idea behind the Electronic Frontier Foundation was they were supposed to um, be a charity that basically took on big business when they tried to to abuse end users' rights with bad U laws or son or other things like that. Uh, and originally, that is what they were. As of late, they've kind of become about everything must be free, software patents must die. They, basically, they've been hanging out too much with the free software people. Um, and they'll they'll side with whoever the hell they have to towards that ends. And most notably, the most recent, you know, su uh, Microsoft trying to overturn the XML uh, special thing patent they infringed on. 
And, and it's like, wait a minute, why is the Electronic Frontier Foundation standing with Microsoft to help take away a little guy's rights? It's like, um, it's, wait, wait a minute, that, that's, uh, it's like, their logic is, well, this will help weaken software patents, but I'm like, but you're beating up on a little guy with Microsoft. But this will help weaken software patents if we win. But you're putting your resources raised through charitable fundraising to beat up on a little guy with Microsoft. <laughs> it's like no matter how you, no matter how they justify that, that's what they're doing. Which is, it seems like, it seems like they're having a Jekyll and Hyde moment. And there's becoming more and more of those lately, which is just a little. <laughs> um, so like I, I don't know if there's really anything else to say on this. It, it, it's disturbing because it wouldn't surprise me if nobody sues on this if iPhone 5 doesn't have some implementation on this because we all know Apple would like nothing more than for jailbreaking to be dead and buried even though the courts say you can do it. That's why they keep releasing updates to break it. Um, if you can't root Android devices, you are locked in unequivocally to what the carriers sell you. You will never be able to get rid of the bloatware on them. Uh, if they have put in the add-ons like at and is doing where they lock out external marketplaces, you will never be able to run unapproved apps, of which there are many, many of which are very useful. Um, and there's just a, it, it, this is kind of scary that this is uh, by its side. It's scary that it seems to be more out of our hands than in, and I thought, you know, that's sort of what the whole, the new DMCA re revisions were supposed to do, was put everything into our hands. Yeah. More of it, at least. Well, see, here's the problem with laws like the DMCA and court rulings like the, okay, now it's legal to jailbreak, and all this stuff. At the end of the day, this is probably the finest case of one-upsmanship in existence. And that as soon as the courts say, well, now they can't bat you over the head with this bad law that never should have been passed in the first place, they'll come over here and find a way to circumvent around it. If, the court, if, the, if Congress passes a law that's supposed to protect blah, but has a loophole in it to abuse you, they will take advantage of it. It's like, the end of the day, we lose, they win, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. The only way, the only thing that really prevents that is true competition. Um, and letting the market actually fight against itself. Um, this is one of the things that scares me about Android, because Android, it, one of the best things about Android was not only did Android compete against iOS and 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 now Windows and WebOS and all of that, but Android also competed against Android, which isn't the case anymore. And that sounds like a completely counterintuitive thing, and a lot of people shine load on that and say, oh, Android's so splinter, it's not the same from one carrier to one network to one thing to the other. And I'm like, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because then you're, it's device A running Android competing against device B, which makes both devices better. Even if it becomes an Android-dominated world, as long as Android was competing against Android, it isn't really a monopoly because every single OEM handset manufacturer and network is competing against each other. If we start locking all of this down like we're doing, it, it's the Windows model. That's the last thing we want. <laughs> well, and actually, from what I've read, with the, uh, the newer version of, uh, of Android that's coming, uh, Gingerbread, Android Google Android. is actually planning to try to standardize it so that the, the end manufacturers won't want to do anything to the UI. I don't know if I see that happening. I, I, a, that's not going to stop anytime soon. B, uh, I'm more concerned about the fact that the carriers are removing features. And with these hardware Agreed. chipsets, Agreed. they're going to they're gonna lock us out of it entirely. Uh, it's, I don't... Um, the average end user is not going to take a mic is not going to do micro soldering on their phone. <laughs> um, it's like you shouldn't have to mod your phone like you do your 360 or your PSP. Actually, this is exactly in line with what was going on with the PSP. It's like PlayStation changed the PSP so you couldn't put Linux on it, and then uh, made the things you needed to do not possible and not doable. It's the same crap going on here now with Android. 
It's like, we envisioned a perfect world. Don't fuck with it. <laughs> um, that's actually, there's one thing I left off.